Welcome to another video from the University of Rhode Island Physics Department, and in this video we're going to be going over the standing waves on a string lab. So, the speed of a wave on a string is related to its tension and linear density by the relation velocity is equal to the square root of force divided by linear density. In other words, velocity is proportional to the square root of force and inversely proportional to the square root of linear density. In this formula, F is the tension in the string measured in newtons, and mu is the linear density, which is equal to the mass per unit length of the string and is measured in kilograms per meter. If L is the length of the string and M is the mass, we can write mu is equal to M divided by L. When a string is fixed at both ends, it will vibrate naturally only at certain frequencies or certain modes. These value, the value of these frequencies depends on L and V. The lowest of these frequencies is called the fundamental frequency. When the string is vibrating in its fundamental frequency, it makes a pattern as shown in the figure. There are two nodes where there is no movement of the string and one anti-node where the string is moving with its maximum amplitude. We call these vibrational patterns standing waves. So for the experimental portion of this lab, we're going to be using a standing frequency generator which is motorized and a wire connected at the other end and we're going to experimentally see if we can recreate these velocities. So what we're going to do is on the other end of the wire, we're going to hang differing amounts of masses to increase the tension in the wire, which will count as our force. So the goal is, as we adjust that force, we're going to see different standing wave patterns. And these different amounts of modes are going to give us different wavelengths. And so since we know that our motor runs at 120 hertz, we can use the wavelength of each standing wave pattern combined with that uh, frequency to see if the velocity of these standing waves matches the equation I mentioned before. So we're going to be comparing theoretically what that velocity should be based on the force we apply to what we're actually seeing experimentally. All right, so now we have the motor running, and right now what we're showing is the fundamental frequency. So this is our first antinode. So you can tell that because it has the two well-defined nodes on the side and then the one antinode in the middle. So this is our fundamental frequency. All right, so now we've added on some more weight, and now we're seeing the second standing wave pattern. So this has two antinodes and three nodes total. All right, so now we've added on another amount of weight, and now we're seeing our third standing wave pattern with three total antinodes and four nodes. So as you can see, in each pattern, we can clearly see the differing amplitudes that show us where the antinodes are. So now that we've seen the individual standing wave patterns, we would then go back to that first equation I mentioned, and we'd use the force we've applied using the hanging weights and the linear density of the string to see if we can calculate what the velocity is. Then, using twice the length of the wire we used, if you divide that by the number of antinodes you see in the standing wave, you should get the velocity of that standing wave pattern. Multiplying that by 120 hertz frequency should also give us the velocity of that wave. So the overall goal of the lab is to see if the calculated version matches up to the experimental version when we're creating the waves by ourselves. 